Hello, I'm Jennifer Branch. It's the second lesson in our reflection series and we're going to add some ripples with these adorable goslings. Let's paint. I'm using some gorgeous twin rocker paper and doing a very loose wash of cobalt blue on it. I want to use horizontal lines to make the water lie flat, but there's also the ripples and so they're going to curve around the geese. I'm leaving lots of white gaps and just dashing a little bit of color. Some nickel azo yellow. Don't do too much or it's going to turn green. Very subtle. Some darker cobalt blue. And it's still wet. It's just drying it with each wash. I haven't waited for it to dry in between. I want a very blurred effect with the only things very sharp, the geese. Quinacridone rust. Nice burnt red. Some nickel azo yellow. Now you're only going to see the reflected images where the opposite side of the ripples. You're not going to see it everywhere. So um, unlike the Southwest Harbor dinghies, you're going to see lines um, where it's a circular pattern of the ripples on the water and they're going to flow together and because we're using watercolor we want them to flow a little bit but there's going to be some abrupt lines of demarcation where those ripples are. Remember, directly towards the viewer. You can blur a little bit one way or the other. In real life, it wouldn't blur at all. It would be directly mirror image. So a good safe rule is mostly paint only where you've painted before when you did the original ripple lines. This part is always a little bit difficult because I don't like to use too much um, gouache on this. I like to keep it very translucent. I want some strong darks in there, Van Dyke Brown, but I want to keep it translucent because it's water. I don't like using a lot of white gouache on water unless I'm doing a white reflection, a highlight, foam on the water, or something like that where I want a texture effect. But this isn't a texture effect. This is a reflection. So the more translucent I can get it and the less gouache I use, the better off I am. So delicate little lines in there, a little bit fussy details because they're cute little goslings and I want to get them just right. Pull some of the colors from the water up into the geese and some of the we already have the colors from the geese down in the water and you're not going to see exactly where one ends and the other begins. There's a blurred line. Sometimes there's a little bit of a highlight or a strong shadow, but especially where there's just a shadow, you're not going to see an abrupt demarcation line. You know, they're going to blur into each other. Now I'm mixing the color slightly. Um, I'm using some a combination of Van Dyke Brown, Quinacridone Rust, and um, Nickel Azo Yellow on the goslings. Um, and then I add a tinge of Cobalt Violet to dull the color because it's it's not quite sunset in this but it's it's edging towards the end of the day and colors are not as vibrant as they would be at midday. They're very dull so Cobalt Violet is a great subtle color duller. The little bit of the red and the blue in there will dull the golds. You want to not go too extreme because it can dull them a lot. 
So if I'm looking for silhouettes, it'd be a great choice, but I'm not looking for silhouettes. I'm looking for very cute. You can tell that there's some bright colors. It shows that there's some bright colors, but a lot of it's in shadow and the color is dulled. And also the interesting reflections from the water onto the geese and the geese, it's just, this is fun enjoy painting reflections. It's one of the most fun things to paint out there because there's unexpected little lights and shadows and color shows up with water where you didn't expect it to go. So that makes it really exciting because, you know, all of a sudden there's blue on the side of a gosling or, you know, pink color on a geese's butt. You, you just can't tell what you're going to see. I go back and forth. I'm using more dry brush on the creatures and more wet on dry on the goslings and the goose reflections. Um, I, that's to get that texture. So, But I still want some sparkle in the water and especially right next to the animals they're moving so the water is very slightly more choppy right next to the animals so I'm pulling this in together and this isn't quite so mirrored as the Southwest Harbor dinghies painting this is this uh, blurs into each other the ripples break up the images so it's not exact You see a lot more of the geese than you do, especially the middle adorable one that's looking towards you. I know my four-year-old son has decided this one is his, and I think it's very appropriate for him, so it is. I just can't say no. But that's really the star of the show, is the tiny little gosling who's looking directly at me. So a little bit of dry brush, just to show where the water's sparkling, but more wet on dry, very smooth some things flowing. I'll go back and use some water and some more paint to make it flow even more. And yeah, I always finger paint. You gotta finger paint. That's that's part of the fun of watercolor or oil or well, definitely pastel. So I've got some little interesting reflections going in there. And you can see how I've stuck with my circular pattern. I'm being very hesitant about each stroke. Um, you know, the first part I just dashed it on there because as long as I had the basic pattern, it really didn't matter. I know where the movement of the water was going and so that's all I had to do was convey that movement. Now I have the cross patterns coming in where the ripples hit each other and make the little V figure eight shapes. And um, that's not exactly either of those, but you understand what I'm talking about. And here, especially, here's a dry brush. This is not an area where I want to go back with gouache. I want that sparkle from the shimmery wet feathers and you know the oils and everything on them and it's very shimmery in the sunlight and that's going to show through the best if I avoid gouache and get it right the first time. So it's a one go sort of thing. I told you where color was interesting. 
with a lot of paintings, it's better to do them three times versus one and fudge your mistakes with some gouache or some heavier coats of paint because you can fix all those mistakes and it will look as good as an oil painting when you're done. And gouache can be used as a technique. I'm all for it. But some of the things like using transparency with watercolor and all that, you can't get back. So if it's not something you planned, then sometimes you're better off painting it a couple times until you can automatically do it with one brush stroke when it might have taken you 10 to start with. Here I'm being very hesitant and I'm building up very dry brush dry layers um, so that it's a little darker on the opposite side from the sun. Some of that bright Quinn rust loving the color. It's the same as burnt sienna but without the the heaviness. I really try to stick with single pigment colors as much as I can because as you know I like mixing on the paper and I like having colors flow together and you really should only mix about three colors at once so you've eliminated a couple of your colors if you have pre-mixed paint. So try to stick as much as possible with single pigment colors. If there's some color that you absolutely love and you need for your paintings, then please use it. Now, this is, this is my interpretation of watercolor and painting. You will have yours and it will be amazing. So, very dry brush, still the fluffy, you know, they, they don't have their real feathers yet, they're just fluffy little down balls. So, lots of dry brush, and see just a couple of lines. I don't need more than that. I have the reflections on the face because I pulled the, the water color right into, over the geese's head, goose's head, and um, right into all of them. So I've already got those going. I don't need to fuss with it anymore. I just need a couple dots. That's all. Keep it simple. There I'm adding the couple little dots there. It's a great thing about a really good round brush with a good point is you can do everything from dry brush to tiny little details. And when you can't do the tiny little details, then you know that it wasn't a good brush to start with, or if you can't do them anymore, then you need a new brush. It doesn't have to be, I, I am enjoying using my Isabees, but it doesn't have to be a big investment. You can get a great brush for $15, $20 that will work for 90% five percent of every painting that you paint just get size 12 or 14 round that's all you need I have to say I am having fun with these lately though so some nice reflections on the goose's butt So that's the water reflecting back and a little bit of the warmer color there. So that's really more reflecting sunlight. A little bit of Quinn rust kind of barely dabbed in there. Keep it very subtle. You don't want to get rid of all your possibilities in there. You want to keep it very subtle and leave a little bit more room. Now this has to be done just like the neck, just a couple strokes, because each stroke will show. This painting took me 
about an hour, a little bit less, um, because it is just a little six by eight inch painting. And it's a very simple idea. And I was just having fun with it. So about an hour, including drying breaks, it's a very simple one. So if you find that you're having to go over and over and it's starting to look overworked, just paint it again. It's, it's great practice and look at the picture, really get to know your subject. And while I think it's great painting along with me on these and I, you know, I highly recommend it and if you go to a class paint or a workshop or whatever, Paint along with the teacher. Paint what they painted first and then go paint your own. I, except for things like this where you're painting along with somebody, it's for a lesson. I highly recommend only painting from your own photographs if you're doing photographs and preferably painting as much from life as possible. I know it's kind of a pain. Sometimes it's too hot, it's too cold or whatever. In that case, paint from your own photographs or do a really quick sketch you know hold yourself to 15 minutes of freezing or boiling right now it's boiling here um, you know keep it simple and um, this this way you really look at what you see and you really know it and it's better to paint things a couple of times and then you know it's going to have that fresh effect where every stroke mattered because you eliminate the second time I paint something I eliminate half my brush strokes okay you see how the the reflections are following the lines you can draw little lines along there and it, they're all following the same ripples you want to make sure that you do that. I am fussing a lot with the cute little gosling there because he's the focus of the painting. And I have to admit that having the camera right there on such a little painting, because the camera was pretty low, um, it made it a little bit harder. It's hard to get that angle just right. I could see what I was painting. <laughs> That's why I usually paint larger ones, but I had a feeling that my my boy would want to want this painting. He loves geese. So just a few little lines on there even though it's a center of interest all you need is a couple dots don't go extreme a couple little tiny dots and all with the same brush I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it inspires you to go paint something on the water whatever that might be I have a couple more videos out there Three rules for painting reflections and some guidelines, Southwest Harbor dinghies, and next week will be Portofino boats. I really hope you're in, enjoying this reflection series as much as I am. For more information, please go to my website, paintingwatercolor.com, and please subscribe. Happy painting!